So here's where we're going to start talking about dynamic power. I don't think any of you would be very surprised that vehicles are constantly changing speed. Uh, here's an example we took from some track data um, on an electric vehicle looking at torque versus speed um, for electric vehicle. And these three different field runs, you know, we find we have a lot of operation in some very similar areas. So when we're tuning the vehicle, you know, we, we don't necessarily need to focus on the whole operation spectrum, the whole torque speed curve. The vehicle spends most of its time in small pockets. So if we optimize over these small pockets, we can effectively increase the range of the vehicle. So from a development standpoint, why would we focus on that full map when we could focus on these high use areas? This is where the real world vehicle duty cycle and the cycle detection come together. So what we find is, is that these motors don't behave nicely in the application. As we're speeding up, as we're slowing down, as we're changing torques, the motors require extra energy to perform these tasks. So in a steady state, they're going to require less energy than when they're changing speed. These controllers, the motor controllers, also have overshoots and resonances. So as we're changing speed, it might overshoot, undershoot, and have an oscillation. This also is going to consume more energy than a fixed speed. So why would we want to characterize all these fixed speeds when we can look at the actual in situation? There's, there's plenty of reasons why, but I think what I'm going to argue is that we should also look at optimizing energy consumption over the real vehicle duty cycle. And the cycle in tech enables us to do an accurate measurement during changing frequencies. We do not require a fixed speed. So as you're changing speed, we can give you a very accurate measurement. And what we have on the right hand side is an example of a vehicle uh, starting up from from zero speed. Uh, this is actually a scooter, so you have to have a little back EMF as it's rolling. The inverter kicks on. We have power flow. And we can see our cycle tech this black square wave tracking that current. And we're getting a very accurate power measurement as the vehicle's changing speed. We can see how it handles regeneration. We can see how the controller responds. We can identify overshoots and controller issues so that we can start to optimize the vehicle efficiency in the real world. And this is what Cycle Detect allows us to do allows us to measure power, measure energy, and optimize the real world situation. So what does this end up looking like in practice? This is what we refer to as drive cycle testing. Another thing I don't think will be any surprise to you all, uh, especially from the automotive side, is that we have these standardized drive cycles. I have five of them on the screen. Some of you may be familiar with WLTP, WLTC, Here's NYC, uh, LA92 is quite popular. These are different standardized speeds versus time that we can use to compare vehicles. And this similar things are used for the certification of the vehicle. We're getting that highway range, we're getting that city range, we're getting the total range of the vehicle. And we'll characterize the vehicle um, and, and use a chassis dynamometer to, to simulate the torque. And, and often the certification will be done with this. But these have no steady state. They're constantly changing speed. So why don't we characterize and understand the vehicle as we're changing these speeds? We can optimize our control. We can increase that range by using these types of measurements. And now HBK is, is incredibly good at this. And we'll look at this in a moment. This is where things get exciting. So we can analyze the total energy consumption and the dynamic power very well. We can record that data. Here's the DC for voltage, for, for current. We have the power, and we can see these dynamics in the power. We can understand that this overshoot, this resonance, are areas we might need to adjust our control for. We can very accurately look at that energy consumption throughout.
This becomes uh, a very realistic to also do on a dynamometer. This is an example of a test that was done with HBK equipment uh, looking at drive cycles. And, and some of you in the audience might find this motor familiar. Uh, it, is, it is a university funded project from um, a Japanese auto supplier. Uh, so we have our speed on the X uh, in blue, um, and we have our torque in red for 30 minute drive cycle. And this is the WLTC. And throughout that, for seven different motor controls, so each color indicates a different motor control, and the, the red one is the optimized, we were able to identify where do we have the most power losses for a given operation? Where do we have the least power losses? How do we make those transitions between motor controls to increase our range? And what we can see is that that red optimized has very much eliminated some of these big spikes. It's minimized the temperature rise throughout the operation. In the middle graph, we have temperature. And it's also reduced the magnet temperature. So by reducing the losses, we've reduced the thermal loading and we've reduced the risk of demagnetization. This is done by optimizing over a real world drive cycle. By measuring the dynamic torque and speed. And the cycle detect is what enables that. Very powerful what we do. Allows for some very cool testing. This is done on a dynamometer with the, with the E-Drive system. You can characterize those power losses cycle by cycle so you can optimize the range of your vehicle.